Welcome back to Talk of the Town. I'm Steve Knoxon, and on the phone right now is State Senator Rob Sampson. Senator, how are you this mo- uh, this afternoon? I'm doing great, Steve. Always uh, very, very pleased to join you and your excellent conversational skills. <laughs> oh, you don't have to suck up to me. You, you're, you're always welcome to join me on the show. The uh... I really enjoyed the last uh, segment, and I agree with you 100%. Uh, we're, we end up paying because a lot of other people are not. Well, and again, the, the government has created that environment, and then the government thinks that they have the solution to that problem that they've created. And it's to me, it's like, you know, no, your solution is even worse than the problem you've created. How about maybe you take a step back and let someone else take a shot at it? That You can add it to the laundry list of all of the reasons why big government, more government control is bad for individuals. Exactly. And uh, it's... It, Unfortunately, as as, uh, as Mr. Kerbin mentioned, this is something that's being promoted not only by the Democrat Party, but also by the Trump administration. It is not a good direction for any administration to be going to try to control an industry like this. And, and if we just would re- take a step back and I talk and about it's this. Certainly not in keeping with Republican principles, even if there are Republicans doing it. Right. Uh, the, the, the Republican principles are those that the country is founded on, that we would preserve individual liberty to its maximum, and, and that government is a necessary evil only. And it certainly shouldn't have the right to affect private contracts or affect people's uh, personal property. You know, that we ought to give people some maybe some kind of test where we put questions like that on it, and then we could determine if they were liberal or conservative. What do you think? <laughs> 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 I, I'm not in, uh, in favor of any test like that, but uh, if there was a test, it ought to be accurate. I agree with you there. <laughs> that was my subtle way of segueing into the reason we have Senator Sampson here on the phone. There was a test that was given out to tenth grade on, uh, in a 10th grade honors civics class over at Wolcott High School that uh, received a lot of attention online and on social media. And basically what it did is it, it, it asks a number of questions of the students and by Based on their answers, it determined if they were liberal or conservative. And that was disturbing enough in and of itself. But then under the definitions of, you know, define a liberal, define a conservative, uh, I really, I didn't have a problem with those answers. You know, traditional family values, responsibility. I thought that was really kind of an interesting part of this test. But the questions that they asked that were either yes or no were were ridiculous when it came to determining someone's political persuasion. No, I agree. Uh, and, and in fairness to the school system and this particular teacher, their position is that this was not a test. This was just a conversation starter. Um, you know, I disagree. I think it's a self-test uh, at the very, very least, because what you're doing is you're putting these questions in front of the students, and uh, you're essentially defining the terms liberal and conservative using the outcome on the questions. Uh, and the questions have very little to do with political ideology, but they have enough to do with political ideology that it's clear that there's an attempt here to have people end up with the result that they, after completion of their self-test, that they will identify as a liberal. And I think that's just something that doesn't belong in a classroom. I want to break down some of these questions because it seems to me that, you know, there should have been a third category here of something more along the lines of libertarian And I think if you answered these questions, yes, most of these questions, yes, you would probably fall more closely to the libertarian to conservative point of view, such as the very first question, kids should be allowed to listen to any music they want. If you answered yes to that, well, you're liberal. And if you answered no to that, you're conservative. Well, right. And the implication is that conservatives don't believe that people should have the freedom to make their own music choice. Right. And I find that offensive. And so do a lot of other conservatives that uh, were angry when they saw this. Yeah, because it's like this, they've, they've created this image that conservatives want to control every aspect of your life. They want to make sure you can only listen to certain things and make sure you attend church and not do these. And it's always it's all this negative rights that they were talking about, it seems, in this test. And to me, it's like it's almost the exact opposite of any group of people out there that are trying to control what people can say and what people can think and what people should read and what people should hear. It's not conservatives. That's correct. Yeah, it's generally the government, and who are, is a fan of creating more government but liberals? Yeah. I mean, just recently, I mean, I talked a little bit about this yesterday. There, there's a law that they want to implement in the state of Massachusetts, certainly no bastion of conservative thought, that would outlaw the use of the, wor- the, the B word. Um, I I'm, I'm hesitate to say this here because we're on the radio, but 
and you would you could face six months in prison for just using that word. Well, I don't think that's a conservative right. position. Yeah, it certainly is not. I, the city of New York, California, they're talking about banning the word illegal immigrant or illegal alien uh, with a $250,000 fine. Um, this is government control dictating individual liberty. Um, it's the main focus of everything I'm trying to teach every person I run into every day because this is the choice that we have before us in our elections uh, that will happen next year and our federal elections do. What do we want to be as a country? Do we want to hang on to our American principles and values of freedom, individual liberty, uh, limited government, uh, making our own choices, pursuing our own happiness, as is described in the Declaration of Independence? Or do we want to be children that the government takes care of and makes our decisions for us? Uh, and it's a real decision. And uh, I think this next election cycle is going to be huge. One of the other questions on this test was you shouldn't have the right. Well, I hate to say test, but assignment. You shouldn't have the right or you shouldn't have to attend a religious institution once a week. And again, if you answered yes to that, well, you're automatically a liberal. And if you answered no to that, well, you're a conservative. In other words, again, creating this mindset in a bunch of 10th graders that conservatives want to force you to go to church on a weekly basis. I've never heard a single conservative in my life propose such an idea. No, I agree completely. I, there's a couple of things going on with this this self-test, Steve. Part of it is the erroneous uh, attribution of liberal and conservative to each of these concepts. But it's also kind of geared in a way so that the cool kids, anyone who thinks they're cool and they're, uh, uh, you know, um, their, their peers are going to admire them, are going to answer these questions with yes. Um, which leads to the conclusion that you're going to end up uh, using the scale at the bottom where you put yourself on the, uh, the spectrum between liberal and conservative. You're going to end up all the way on the liberal side. And um, I, to me, that's, that's, that's the harm here. You know, I didn't automatically jump all over this issue. Uh, the first thing I did, because I found out about it from a, stu- from a parent of a student in this class, And she reached out to me very, very upset about this for the same reasons that we're discussing here today. But my first reaction was go back to the teacher and find out exactly what is going on with this and what their intentions were. And, you know, I I, I read the teacher's response, and it it was very hard to read and understand what he was trying to say. But on one hand, he's saying that this was not meant to create labels. And I'm like... (laughs) What are you kidding? That's exactly what it does. You are you are putting these questions in a way that they have no choice but to end up with a label and an incorrect one at that. The assignment the is called is, the assignment is called liberal or conservative. Right, <laughs> I mean, right. It's title. all about labels. And the other thing he said was that this was a, a, a process to allow the students to come up with their own definitions of liberal and conservative. And when I read that, I was like, what? Um, there are already definitions of liberal and conservative, and it's your job as a teacher to make sure that you give the students an accurate depiction of what they mean, not to let them decide for themselves what those words mean. And this is is so much of what's going on in our society, Steve, is that objective truth, uh, you know, what is morally right and wrong, uh, these things have become more and more subjective over time because... uh, Liberals like it that way. They, they, they like uh, people to, um, you know, be on a spectrum of what is right and wrong versus having uh, concrete notions that are built into our culture. So uh, when, you, when the school was contacted, they responded that while we feel there was no malicious or political intent in the assignment, again, the title is liberal or conservative, uh, no political intent, right? But we understand that in the current highly polarized political environment of our country that some parents may have found it concerning. And again, it's it's such what weasel words, you know? Well, you know, because of the current highly polarized political environment. No, 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 no. This has nothing to do with highly polarized. This has to do with a complete misrepresentation to students in 10th grade that they know what what the goal is here. They're trying to make, like you said, as you said, even in this article that was in the current, you would have come out as a liberal in this. Yeah, I think almost anyone. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> anyone who is an American who cherishes uh, freedom and individual rights is going to come out more yeses than noes by far. 
Well, and it's funny because one of the questions kids should, and these are these, how old were these kids? They were like 15 years old, right? So they right. ask them, kids should be able to watch anything they want on TV. Kids should be able to go on a date alone at 15. Kids should be able to stay out all night after junior prom. Well, of course a 15-year-old is going to say yes to that. They want all the freedom they can get. That has nothing to do with liberal or conservative perspective. Right, and there are a couple of questions like the ones that you just mentioned that not only are they uh you know, creating incorrect definitions for these terms, but they are undermining uh, parents in some way by making it cool uh, to um, support concepts that you should be able to stay out all night after junior prom. My favorite like, one. Like that should even be presented as an option to a 15-year-old. Right, exactly. What do you think you're going to say? <laughs> Dude, that, that should never be a question that you have your own choice to. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, if you're 15 and you're given that option, what do you think they're going to say? No, no, no. I should probably go home early. I mean, come on. Let's be real. Uh, one of the other questions I think was really funny, and, and the answer to it is uh, really kind of, again, just so disingenuous. It's kids should sit down and eat dinner with the family. And if you answered yes to that, you were considered liberal. Yet, meanwhile, when they define conservatives at the bottom, they say, well, conservative believes in traditional family values. Well, those two things fly in the face of each other if you're saying that it's liberal to say that the kids should sit down and eat dinner with the family. It just don't make yeah, sense. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I cannot explain that question because it seems to stand out as one that is clearly obvious, no matter whether you're referring to politics or, uh, you know, tradition or that kind of thing. It's just, I just think that this is an ill-conceived assignment. I think it's a wonderful idea that they want to approach these subjects in the classroom, but it has to be done with a delicate and even hand. You cannot be weighing on one side of the scale, and you certainly cannot be misleading students into believing that they should self-identify as liberals when uh, the definitions that led them down that path have nothing to do with it. Well, this is yet another example of why I'm sure you, as well as I and many others, and Representative Master Francesco, do not want to relinqu- relinquish local control of the school systems. Again, I, I say this as someone who kind of leans toward regionalization, but that still would require a bit of local input into what's happening in the schools. And I'm glad to see that so many people saw this and said, wait, hold on, problem here, and that they pulled this, this assignment. Right. So, uh, yeah, it, it seemed to me that the only people that were uh, angry with me and the representative for bringing this uh, issue forward, and, you know, I tried to handle it as delicately as I possibly could, Steve. Um, I was getting numerous phone calls from parents and people in the district. My job as their representative is to make their voice heard. They're, they're, they get to petition the government for grievances, and they expect action. So uh, regardless of how I felt about this personally, I was going to bring it forward simply because of their concerns. But, of course, I had my own. When I read this, I, this was a huge red flag went up for me, and I wanted to make it an issue. Um, I don't know. It's, it's going on all across the country, and that's why I think people are sensitive to it. Yeah, well, and I think people need to be paying more attention to what's happening in their schools, and I think that's just common across the board. Senator Rob Sampson, again, I appreciate you, you coming on and talking about this. I, I saw this, and I was just blown away by it, so I'm glad to see that you've got some action on this. Uh, you always do a great job, sir, and uh, as always, a pleasure to have you on, and we'll look forward to having you back. Thanks so much for the opportunity, Steve. Reach Take, out to me anytime. Sure enough, sir. Have a great afternoon. Yeah. sir. Have-